What's up everyone, welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Honda Accord. Let's get right into it. There will be six different trim levels for you to choose from on the 2024 Accord. Two gas and four powered as a hybrid. The LX starts you off at 27,895 and the top trim touring hybrid runs you off at 38,5. So hopefully within this uh, group of six, a uh, price span of about 11,000, there is an Accord that will fit your budget and exactly what you want. Engine options. You only get one for the gas, and that's 1.5 liter turbo, turbocharged four cylinder, 192 horsepower, and 192 pound feet of torque. Um, not that slow of a vehicle, but certainly not the fastest. If you opt for the hybrid setup, you're going to get a two liter four cylinder with two electric motors giving you a little more power, 204 horsepower, 247 pound feet of torque. You definitely will feel that extra speed and um, torque off the line compared to that gas, but really uh, speaking, not much more power there. Both powered by either a CVT or an ECVT, and front-wheel drive is standard on all Accord trims. Definitely bummed to hear that. They're still not having all-wheel drive as even an option in their lineup. And for these prices, I feel like they should be standard. Not even an option, but they're not there at all. MPGs, definitely different throughout these trim levels. The best you can get is going to be that EXL Hybrid at 51 City, 44 Highway. Uh, the gas trims really aren't that bad either at 29 City and 37 Highway. Before we keep going guys, just real quick, here at Ben's Car Reviews, I strive to bring the most accurate and relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no waste of time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at some pictures now. We go through the main features. This generation Accord has a design I found intriguing because while I think it's a fairly boring and lackluster design, I think it's pretty slick and modern at the same time. I think the back end may be where it falls short. I see what Honda is intending with the linear tapered LED taillights but I think they just don't quite look right. But the more I look, the more I like them. Within the distinctive front fascia, featuring a glass black, gloss black mesh grille panel, the dual LED low beams are in the dark housing, and I think they look super sleek with and with the times. You know, definitely modern look, having that darker housing. The side profile is certainly a good look with the fast back style inspired roofline resembling many iconic models, such as the Mustang. I'm not saying this looks like a Mustang, just the fast back style. Gloss black styling accents, available rear diffuser, and available rear deck lid spoiler add even more character to the model, depending how you option and trim. Some performance touches include a motion management system that delivers responsive, agile handling. You'll get four drive modes, including sport mode. Noise canceling insulation throughout reduces road noise. Also a low friction steering uh, system tuned front suspension and a vibration reducing suspension in the rear uh, for a more comfortable ride. Seven different color options encompassing a darker palette overall. Blacks, blues, red, silver, and white are your main choices. If you're into the more sporty looks, then Honda seems to be forcing you into a hybrid to get it. I'm seeing this across all their models. Uh, recently, the CRV one I did, it's very apparent. If you want the black wheels and black accents or even more aggressive looks overall, you're finding it only on the hybrid models. But if you're more into the simple looks, the gas models will do just fine. Those top hybrid trims also get you the larger 19-inch wheels, certainly more appealing because the rest have 17-inch. 17-inch wheels at this point in time in 2024 are way too small. I think there should be an 18-inch minimum mandated across all manufacturers. That's just my opinion. All-season tires on all trims and only the gas models get you a spare. Uh, we're seeing that across most vehicles now that have batteries in them. You're not getting a spare or even the option for one. The Touring Hybrid gets you rain-sensing wipers, and that's the only one. The sedan is 195.7 inches long, 57.1 inches tall, and weighs in between 3,200 and 3,500 pounds. In terms of best bang for your buck, if you want the gas engine, then definitely jump up to the EX and get the most out of the gas as you can, considering it's just 2,000 more than the base. If I'm picking the hybrid, I'm going to go nearly all in and get the Sport L hybrid. You'll be getting a very nice interior with the best standard features, um, and once again, you're only 2,000 more than the lowest priced hybrid. At that point in the trim ladder, I don't see the point of going the extra 4,000 for the touring hybrid because you're always getting, you're already getting so much in the Sport L. But certainly, I would jump up to that Sport L. Let's see what Honda's released on the interior. We'll go through those main features. I think the interior flows really well in this Accord. This is an expensive sedan, so I would expect a lot. All aspects are up to par with what I would expect. The bottom trim gas models come with a rather small 7-inch touchscreen, while the top hybrid trims get the larger 12.3-inch touchscreen, which is a great size in the setup. And I wish was the standard on all trims. I have a 7 inch screen in my Challenger and although it doesn't take away from my driving experience, I sure feel like I deserve more for the price tag. Certainly same here are my thoughts on the Accord. 
Apple CarPlay Android All capability. All models come with a 10.2 inch driver's digital gauge cluster, which is phenomenal. Great to see that at least. Available heads up display on the top trims. Honda claims excellent front and rear legroom and a trunk that can hold 16.7 cubic feet of storage. Body stabilizing front seats and top trims with lumbar support. Rear seats engineered to be more supportive. Available heated and ventilated front seats. The bottom three trims come with cloth seats and the rest have leather, which is a great touch. I'm always curious if people prefer cloth or over leather. I think I'm indifferent. I see benefits to both. There's an available power moonroof, available wireless charging, and as I mentioned before, a well-insulated cabin and a cool walk-away lock feature is um, part of this. Honda Sensing Technology is part of a sleuth of driver's assist safety and technology features you can get on your Accord. Overall, I'm happy with this interior, aside from the bottom trims having a pretty small screen. I think the rest of the standard features per trim level are adequate and make sense. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a four-door sedan like this heading into 2024, obviously no shortage of competition and big players in this market. Um, just to name a couple, um, you have the Hyundai Sonata, which if you haven't seen the new Sonata for 2024, check it out. Hyundai hasn't released a ton of information yet. I'll get that to you once they do. Um, but a very unique design coming out on that. Kia K5, as we all know, bold in your face, definitely a cool design. Toyota Camry, once again, sporty, sleek. I think the designs on these other models on the exterior are ahead of the Accord. Um, like I mentioned, they're just kind of more boring. They're close to being really sharp, but I just don't think they're quite there. And I think the competition makes them look less good than they would if, uh, if the competition didn't look so good. But that's just the way it is. Either way, a lot to compare beyond that if you're looking to buy one of these, so do that. Uh, well, I have videos out for a lot of other vehicles in this category, so check those out if you're looking to compare. But hopefully this video laid things out clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching this Ben's Car Review. Please subscribe if you're not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out and join if you'd like, and I'll catch you on the next Ben's Car Review.